We are Politics and Color, and we plan to be with you for the next 100 and more days of this U.S. presidential election. There are several uh, administrations where Republicans, in fact, had power. What did they do for black people while they had the power, well, while they had the gavels, Trump, while they had the Oval Office? President, best economy ever for black people. He well, that's not, that's, that's not true. I mean, what candidate that they, if they put up, would concern you the most? Well, I think Kamala. Uh, for the simple reason that it's the least amount of revision that has to be done. Kamala Harris is a legitimate left-wing political person. I mean, you look at every crazy idea that comes from the left. She hasn't just said, I'm for them. She's voted for them. Look, unless you happen to be a big tech billionaire or a Mexican drug lord, and by the way, if you're either of those, you probably ought to vote Democrat because your life has gotten much better. There is we're all in the same boat, right? 401ks and IRAs are very revolutionary. We may be all on, in the same boat, but we're residing in different cabins. <laughs> so. Now what's coming up next on the docket is for Donald Trump Jr. to come. As you can see, his dad behind us in the box with the entire family, and he's got other politicians there that are also on the docket, but just here to support him. I ran for president with my vision, and it overlaps heavily with President Trump's vision, and I'm going to do whatever I can to help him succeed. Character still counts, and I worried about uh, the character of Donald Trump and leading our nation. I'm a Republican. I want to vote for a Republican, but you know I've indicated that I don't want to support somebody who's been a convicted felon. You got to vote, and so at the end of the day, that's what you got to do. Uh, where you land is where you land. Yes, we're at the Republican National Convention here in Milwaukee. We'll be in Chicago for the Democratic National Convention. We're traveling along with this process as it happens. One of the things that I really am looking forward to doing with this platform through Politics and Color is explaining to our audience, to our constituents, the why. 2045, it's projected that folks of color will be the majority, not the collective minority. So the politicians know this. And so if we're smart, we're gonna make that investment in our politics, in going out there and voting and getting involved because that's what makes a difference.